are at the legendary Camp Louis Marina in Shell Beach, Louisiana. We've been 120 years in business, family owned, family operated. My boy's fifth generation. We're about to get it done. I'll show you how it's done today. How we do everything around here, how this whole place operates. This is where it starts in the morning. Right here. Got right to sell here. them to go get them. <laughs> All right, y'all, as Robbie just mentioned, I am here at the legendary Campos Marina in Shell Beach, Louisiana. It's older than me. It's older than you, I promise. But it's still here, still kicking after hurricanes, oil spills, you name it. These folks are still here. Now, we are not rod and reel fishing today. I know you're probably thinking you heard of Shell Beach before. If you have, you remember that great rod and reel fishing they have. But we're going to see how they catch their bait that they sell to the anglers who come down here to fish. That's where I want to start making this video. So we're going to get out on the shrimp boat this morning. We're going to go catch some shrimp. Y'all know me, I love shrimp. When you come to St. Bernard Parish, shrimp is a big part of our culture and we're going to show you how they catch it here with a trawl. So come along with us, can't wait to show y'all. That's why you come right there. Yeah. That's why you come. So tell us what we're looking at. Well. Uh, this boat's pulling up here. He's probably going to want, uh, I would say, 150 or so, and maybe 200. And I'm going to count him out of this buck, out of this net here, and put him in this bucket. And how many he wants? He wants 50 in one bucket. All right. Well, there we go. Is that brown shrimp or white no, it's shrimp? White shrimp. I can kind of tell what my customers want when they pull up. I know. How I'm, about you that? Know, you know, when I see that boat coming out of the I know he's good for 100, 150, 200 shrimp. Or most of my charter captains, I can tell them, you know, I see if they got the guys, mm. they got four or five guys in the boat, they want 300. You know? Right. So I'm, I'm always, I'm the counter. So I'm, you know, and by knowing, by knowing your customers, you know what they want, you know. And yeah. You try to get it out to them as fast as you can so they can get going, you know. You know, it's funny to hear and say that because this is one of those places in St. Bernard people always ask about, how's the folks at Campos? What's going on at Campos? And I think the family became sort of like friends to everybody who comes here. And you'll see that as what he just said. All right, I see those guys. I've been seeing them for 30 years. I know what they want. Let's send it to them. Why are you putting water in the boat, man? Come on. So we're putting water in the boat to keep our shrimp live. That's the main thing. We want live shrimp. We don't want dead shrimp. We want live shrimp. So this is actually a giant live well, folks. We're going to fill it up and get to fishing. We're sink the boat. That's what we want. <laughs> Calculated sinking. Beautiful sunrise, beautiful morning here in South Louisiana in St. Bernard Parish. We want you to come see us so you can experience some of these beautiful sights. Get in on some of these shrimp we're going to catch and experience this culture. Come down here and see you, folks. We already got a net in the water. Check that out. What size nets are these? 40 foot. 40 foot nets. Yes, wow. That's a big net. And the saw boards. Check that out. That's what's going to open your net up and, and drive the trawl. Check that out. Got a 
complicated system here. All right, so that was the back of the net. It's going out now. All right, you can see the net starting to stretch out. Getting some momentum. All right, your net is out. So your question earlier about why, why I like to drag in a certain spot there is because usually the day before, we always own the shrimp. We stay on the shrimp. So I'll usually pick up where I left off at the, night, the day before, you know? And, yeah. and sometimes they're not in the same spot. You gotta go find them again, but that's why we drag every day. We stay on them. Right, you know? right, right. Three miles or so of, right. of ship channel to drag. And you got all the way from Violet all the way down to the dam, going on the other side of the dam. Then you got all the way out past the Long Rock. So it's just a matter of where they're gonna be where at, at and where you're gonna find them, you know? Yeah, we're about to get to it. We're waiting on the sun to come up. Once that sun comes up, the trawl goes down. We gotta wait for them shrimp to settle. Remember, we, we're trawling. So, the shrimp on the bottom, we're fishing deep water. We're not skimming, pushing butterfly nets or any of that. We're trawling, we're pulling this thing. So you right. want your shrimp on the bottom? I want my shrimp on the bottom. I don't want them swimming. Ah, I got and that's it. why, if you see under the trawl boards right here, that tickle chain, we yeah. call it a tickle chain because it rides in front of the net and it tickles all the shrimp up and pops them up and then they go in the net and go to the back. Yeah. But we make short drags. We're making like three, four, five minute drags. Oh, wow. And uh, we pick up, put back down, pick up, put back yeah, down, right. pick up, put back down and fill right. it up as quick as we can, you know? Wow. Once that sun comes up, work starts. How about that? All right, y'all. We got it just about filled up to what we need. And all your shrimp are going in here to go back to serve all the fishermen that come down and hopefully you'll be one of them. All right, folks, he just said the sun's up, so we're gonna go ahead and drop. You gotta wait till the sun's up, though. Pick it up at 6.33 and see what we got. Wow, that quick? Yeah, that quick. <laughs> That's crazy, man. You got your live bait, got to keep alive. Right, right, right. All right, y'all, that was it. Three minutes. That's pretty cool. Three minutes, it's coming back up. Got some high power winches here, folks. Using the pole to thread it on right, so it threads on evenly. Yeah, we got Flipper. Flipper's here. All right, first first sight of the net. And boards are up. Time to check the net. Gotcha. Okay, so 
So that goes to the back of the net, right? So this is called your lazy line. And the reason why it's lazy because it just hangs out like that. <laughs> so you pull this in, this is what pulls your tail. Right. And I give it to my deck hands, so he goes up there in the block with it right there. Okay. And you come in, you pull it on, you slap. And then you come here. Oh, okay. And then you, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right wow. All right, so that is all pulling the tail of the net in. It's coming to us now. There it comes right here. Three minutes, folks. That's all that was down. Three well, minutes. How good it's going to be. It might get better as the day goes. And, and Flipper's trying to get in his net. I don't know if y'all see Flipper there, but he's he's trying to get a free meal out to look at Flipper. Come on, Flipper. He's hanging out by the tag, getting them white trout coming out of there. Yeah. All right. There it is, folks. There they are. Three minutes, y'all. That was three minutes. Nice. So, see how they swimming around in there now? Yeah. Garrett's gonna do his job. Which is what? And he's gonna pick them. He's gonna sort the live shrimp out and throw the fish back overboard. Okay. He's gonna, he's gonna take the shrimp with us and give the fish back. Right, right, right. Maybe, maybe Flipper might get him a free meal. Right. <laughs> okay, he's got him a little picking box right here. Check that out. Jared's even got him a little dry box there. Boy, look at him. Don't have to stand in the water. That's awesome, man. Everything is well thought out. Everything has a place, a compartment, a roll. These guys been doing it a long time, folks. I'll edit that out. Don't worry. when you have enough slack out there. It gets tight. Oh, okay, you feel it, yeah. You are reeling that slack up because if you don't, then you'll have so much slack and the rope will get slack. And ah, wrap up and I gotcha, yeah. You don't wind up having a big old mess on the, on the pad. Head. Yeah. And then when that happens, you just get away from it because <laughs> you get wrapped up in the wind before you know it. Gotcha. <laughs> Say that again? You have to shake this, this one down. Oh, I thought you were talking. They don't go all the way to the tail. They'll stay right here. Ha, ha, ha. 
That was all trip. Wow, how about that? Not much picking to do, huh, man? I would have cleaned like that. St. Bernard Gold right there, folks. That's why you come down here. We got lots of it. All right, so this is the sorting table. And what's going on here, he's trying to get fish out for one, right? So you get all your fish out that you don't need. I think they keep some of the smaller croakers for bait. Fish is gone, shrimp goes in, and that's it. What's amazing is he's still working on the net that came up just for three minutes. That's crazy. When you know where they are and you know what you're doing, it helps. <laughs> Check him out. Well, Zach called it. As soon as that sun gets up, the light starts lighting up the water, the shrimp sink down, and we're catching better with every drag. As every, you know, 10 minutes passes, gets a little bit brighter out, and we're starting to catch them even more. That's really interesting to know that it gets better as the light comes up, as the sun comes up. We're catching them more. It's a good day to be in St. Bernard, folks. You gotta come see how it is down here. Just a wonderful lifestyle. Lots of water, lots of shrimp, lots of fish. Come check us out, folks. All right, now all the shrimp you see here, that will last for the beginning part of this week, like Monday. By Tuesday, this shrimp should be all gone. Now on a busy weekend day, they may have to come out twice just to supply that one particular day. So it really just depends on what the demand is, how good the fishing is, and how many people here are fishing. All right, man, so how are we looking? We're looking good, we're almost done. <laughs> we're gonna make this drag by one more. I think we got the well full. Wow, how about that? What time is it right now, let's see. Uh, seven, 26. <laughs> Nice. Every day in gold, but right, right, I'll take right. it when I can get Amen it. Amen to that. <laughs> so look, bro, if somebody's never been to St. Bernard, what you got to say to them? I got to say, this is the fisherman's paradise. I'd probably put it against any place that you can say that's the best fishing in the world. I think St. Bernard Parish got you beat. We got some of the best fishing in the world, the best seafood in the world, and I'll stand by that. We got the best shrimp in the world. And that, th that goes all the way from Texas up the East Coast. And I'm proud to say that. Amen. And I think, honestly, 
I got the best round. <laughs> look, look at this guy right there. Oh, <laughs> holy smokes! Good night, y'all. Wow. <laughs> Way to end the day, huh? Go out with a bang, my people. That is amazing. Look at the shrimp, y'all. Look at them. That is amazing. Each one has gotten better, just like he said. The higher that sun gets, the better it got. That is crazy, y'all. Wow. Yeah, right. All right, y'all, so these are ones who didn't make it, for the most part. That's really not too bad, considering you're trying to keep shrimp alive in, I don't know, 88 degree water. Yeah, about 88, 90 degrees. Right. So now we got to we'll get them from in here to these the wells we'll in here. Those we sell them for market bait. Right, right. And uh, we sell those. Some people don't have the opportunity to have a live bait bucket and they right. don't want live bait. We, we got, got, we got, got that too. That's out. right. Nothing goes to waste. All right, folks, now I hope you got to see what it's like to work on a bait boat down here in St. Bernard Parish, the inshore fishing capital of the world. The next thing to do is to go home, get cleaned up, and we got to eat. We got plenty of shrimp, so we're going to take some to one of our favorite local restaurants. Why don't you come on with us? Oh. See, this is what didn't go to the bait box. Zach kept some of these bigger ones out, and we're here to show y'all at one of our favorite restaurants called Crave. Here in St. Bernard, how they're going to cook them up. And the dish actually has a special name, which has to do with Zach's family. Zach, tell us the name of what the dish is here we're going to try. So we're going to try the Blackie Campos Alfredo. And you can get it with shrimp or chicken. And we're going to go with shrimp today. So, And I brought my own. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He saved the best. Let's go get inside and see how they cook them up. All right. We got some Shelby shrimp here down from down the road. <laughs> we're going to toss it up in our... Blackie seasoning, so we'll have our Blackies blackened shrimp. We got that Alfredo sauce made by the best. Made from scratch? Made from scratch, baby. Wow. Campo's pasta. All right, y'all, there it is, the Blackie Campo Alfredo. And I know you have heard of blackened fish, you've heard of blackened shrimp, but you haven't heard of Blackie Campo Alfredo. So I'm gonna let Zach talk to me a little bit about who Blackie was. He's a local legend. Uh, that's, the, you know, that's the guy who kind of really made the marina that you saw what it is and how famous it is. So who exactly was Blackie Campo? So Blackie Campo was my great grandpa, and uh, he is the founder and the, the, the backbone the structure that built everything that my family's name is proud of as a Campo's Marina. And uh, he left us a legacy to carry on, and that's what I'm doing. Now, was he, did he was he a commercial fisherman or primarily ran the marina and just loved to fish? 
Yeah, that's kind of what it was. He was a commercial fisherman. Oh, he was, he, he's yeah. a trapper. He did. He did it all. You know. He, he did it all. Yeah, he did everything, and um, that's what it was. It was just building a. He built the business and and fishing, and that's what it was. He he took his Tuesdays off. He always went fishing every Tuesday. <laughs> he was known for that, yeah. you know. And and that, that's that's you know that's pretty much it. It was just a legend, you know. Yeah. Love back and so one thing I love here, like like everyone knows him in the New Orleans area, and they always have such fond stories because like. A lot of folks didn't grow up down here, didn't start coming here until they started sport fishing, yeah. you know. But he welcomed everybody with open arms. Like oh, he yeah. didn't care if you were a commercial fisherman, sport fisherman, he was there oh, yeah. to give you a place to come. And 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 he was so genuine, you know, and it didn't matter if you he didn't know how to catch fish or where to go or how to get there, yeah. he'd tell you and show you and did his best and Pretty much when you left there, you left with all smiles, you know? Right, whether you caught fish or not. Yeah. yeah, and if you didn't catch fish, you could come back to the dock and go shoot stories and bullshit. Right, right, <laughs> right. So is that kind of how you and your dad run it now? Is that like it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. We just picked up on it, you know, and it's it's still the same way, you know? My dad, he taught me everything I know about trawling and catching bait. Mm -hmm. I learned, my Uncle Mike did too, my Uncle Mike. And let's talk about the motto. What's the motto for Campos? When, when you get off the bridge, what do you need to do? Oh, you need to hook the left. Hook know? the left, y'all. Hook the left. You got to hook, hook the left. left. And, what does uh, that mean? So when you come over to Wyconski Bridge, you take a left. <laughs> and you come all the way down. You can't miss it. You, you go too left. far, you're going to run it. You're going to run it and miss the go. I love it. I, you know, if it was me, and you've seen this video within, you know, the first few weeks of us releasing it, I would look at Thanksgiving week. You know, I'd be here in St. Bernard for Thanksgiving week. They still gonna have shrimp at that point. The, the fishing's gonna be phenomenal. If you can get here for Halloween, that should be great too. But if you only, if the only time off you have and able to take a vacation is Thanksgiving week, definitely come during that time. Come see him at Campos. Like you said, even if you don't catch fish, you go get to visit with folks who've been yeah, doing Yeah, come this. hang out, you know, just come hang out. Come hang out. <laughs> you could buy some shrimp. Bring the kids, they can out. fish off the dock. We always got some big old 40, 50 pound drum hanging out around the dock. And, you know, they can fight them fish all day long until their arms fall off, you know, they, they, whatever they want to do. So just come on down and hang out. And you see me, you see my dad, just say hi, you know, we're here. I don't know what else we got to tell y'all now. We'll see you when you get here.